explain why it says Easter in the Bible. All right, let's see it. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to people. Let's see what my King James study Bible has to say. Acts 12 verse 4. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Easter has a 2 verse 4. Let's go to four, 2. The Passover. Hmm. Why would they replace Passover with Easter? So they didn't replace Passover with Easter. It's actually the other way around, but this is still a really cool story. Uh, in the New Testament, they did not have a Greek word for Passover, so they just transliterated the Hebrew Pesach and got Pascha. A transliteration is where you use your own uh, script or characters or letters to try to reproduce the sounds that a foreign word makes rather than just translating. And this transliteration in the Greek New Testament was used in the Latin Vulgate's translation, was used in Wycliffe's translation of the uh, New Testament into English in the 14th century. And then when we get to the 16th century with Martin Luther and William Tyndall, they didn't want to use a transliteration. They wanted to translate it, but they didn't have a word for Passover. So they used their words for Easter. William Tyndall in his 1526 New Testament used Easter or some variation in all but I think three places where he uh, used Paschal lamb. And then Luther used uh, Oster or Austern, uh, pretty much everywhere. Now, with uh, Tyndall's 1530 English translation of the Pentateuch, now he's translating the Hebrew Bible and the Hebrew Pesach, and he didn't want to use this thoroughly Christian word. So William Tyndall invented the word Passover to create a word in English for the Hebrew Bible's use of Pesach. Martin Luther just used Oster throughout the Hebrew Bible, uh, but Tyndall invented the new word. And so in his 1534 edition of the New Testament, he did not go back and revise all of the occurrences of Easter to Passover in the New Testament. He left them alone. But subsequent editions of the Bible that were largely revisions of his New Testament did start uh, changing the occurrences of Easter to Passover. So the Coverdale Bible. Uh, the Matthews Bible, the Great Bible, the Geneva Bible, the Bishop's Bible. And by the time you get to the King James Version, the 1611 King James Version only leaves one occurrence of Easter in the New Testament, probably inadvertently, and it's been there ever since. Let's see what my 1800s Bible has to say. Acts chapter 12, verse 4. Intending after the Passover to bring him forth to the people. So that 1800s Bible is what is known as a parallel New Testament. It has the 1611 King James Version on one side, and it has the 1881 Revised Version on the right side. And that Revised Version was the first time that the King James Version had been revised. And it was done so because of advances in manuscript discoveries and advances in uh, the science of textual criticism. And so there were a lot of changes made and a lot of corrections made. And so in that Bible that this creator is showing, they do not show the left column, which would be the 1611 version, which would show the word Easter. The 1881 version is the update where they changed Easter to Passover. And here is that version of the Bible. This is not the exact same edition, but it is the same publication. And you can look at verse four in both columns. You see Easter on the left, you see Passover on the right. So somewhere in the translations between 1890 and 1980, they decided to change the Jewish sacred holiday of the Passover feast of what was going on at that time to Easter. No, it is the other way around. They changed Easter to Passover. This creator is just confused about the dates and the editions of the Bibles that they're looking at.